Good afternoon, everybody. This is Pastor Gerald Wheaton from Grace Bible Church. I uh, want to thank you for tuning in on today's uh, video presentation. Uh, it means a lot to me. Now, let me tell you what the desire is of this preacher on today. You know, I've given a lot of thoughts all of the years that I've been in the ministry. It kind of went down memory lane. Uh, even went so far back as to uh, my call to the ministry and why I do what I do. Well, let me say this. Uh, I remember some 35 plus years ago when the Lord called me into the ministry that the number one thing that was on my mind was for the saints to be edified. I remember back in the middle 80s as I used to go to church um, as a child, and it seemed to me uh, that there was much worship, but there was very little knowledge when it came to the preaching of God's Word. And what I found out is that we could give the testimony, but when it came to speaking the truth of Scripture, there was so much that was lacking. And I asked the Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. Help me that I can do something for you that it might be a help to your people. And so my call to the ministry was to be able to take God's word and to be able to feed uh, the flock. And so I want to say that the purpose uh, of today's teaching uh, is that we lay down some foundation as to what the gospel of the grace of God is. But then again, it's also important to give a little bit of information as to Jesus Christ as call as being the apostle to the Gentiles, but also the one that he gave the revelation concerning the body of Christ. You know, for 35 plus years, I've been called a grace preacher. Well, I want you to understand that in all of my years of preaching grace, uh, I know what it is to stay in trouble. Not everybody wants the message. And I know what it is to be run out of churches. Uh, I know what it is to be blackballed. Uh, I know what it is for churches even to ask that I leave because the word that was being preached was not according to their denominational uh, background. And, you know, not to get into all of that, but the thing that I want to say to you today is that the church has been in trouble for a while. And the reason for us being in trouble is because of our failure to acknowledge the apostleship of the Apostle Paul. And so what I would like to do today is go into the book of Romans. We're probably not going to get past verse 2, probably only going to deal with verse 1, uh, but I want to do a little study, and I'm asking the Lord over time to help me uh, that these messages can be some help uh, to those in the body of Christ. Now, let me say this. I'm not going after anybody. I'm not trying to talk down anybody. Uh, I just want to look at the scriptures, speak the truth of what they say, and hope and pray that we can get some light. And so let me say this. First of all, if you have your Bible, I want you to turn with me to Romans chapter one. Romans chapter 1. If you don't have your Bible, go get your Bible uh, because you need to follow up uh, behind the preacher. Nothing wrong with that. Not offended by that. And so go and get your Bible. Now, in our text today, uh, we're going to learn a little bit about the one that Jesus Christ uh, has said uh, is a chosen vessel unto him. And for over 35 years, I've preached this, I've taught this, 
uh, I really see the need to be a little more bold and a little more blunt as we put it out to the Facebook audience. And so if you turn in your Bibles, Romans chapter 1, and we are going to look at verse 1. Romans chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. And notice what it says on the page. It says this. It says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Now, now notice it begins with the name, the name Paul. Now, for you that know your Bible, uh, Paul's uh, Jewish name, I'm not going to say former name, but his Jewish name was Saul. And if you're familiar with the first time that we meet him on the pages of the scripture, it would be in the book of Acts chapter 8. Uh, it is there that Paul is taking place in the martyr uh, by the name of a man called Stephen. Well, Paul's Roman name is Paul. And Paul assumes his Roman name uh, when he assumes his call as the apostle to uh, the Gentiles. As we look at our verse, it says Paul, and then it says a servant of Jesus Christ. We're probably not going to get any farther than that. But notice what he says. Paul says, I am a servant of Jesus Christ. Now, it's important that we understand the issue of Paul being a servant because there are those who accuse us, who make much of Paul, that we are trying to usurp the name of Christ or the ministry of Christ by elevating this man. Well, we're going to put that in the right perspective. And so Paul lets us know right off of the bat that he is a servant of Jesus Christ. You know, in all the letters that Paul wrote, and the salutations to whether it was churches or individuals, there was only one other time that he uses this title of being a servant of Jesus Christ. And it is in the book of Philippians. It's Philippians chapter 1, verse 1, to where Paul includes Timotheus or Timothy as a fellow servant of Christ with him. Now, the question is asked, well, what does it mean to be a servant of Christ? Well, first of all, let's give us some definition. The word servant in the text can also uh, be translated as bond servant or even the word slave. And so what Paul says in the text, he says, I'm a bond servant of Jesus Christ, or I am a slave of Jesus Christ. The Greek word for servant being the word doulos, uh, meaning bond servant or slave. Now, we need to give some meaning to the word so that we know how this applied to the Apostle Paul in his ministry of Jesus Christ. And so when Paul says that I am a servant, uh, there are two senses in which Paul speaks this word of being a slave. In Greek culture, uh, I'm, and I'm just going to read this from my notes, in Greek culture, that word slave, it is most often referred to as the involuntary permanent service of a slave. And so what Paul is talking about when he uses the word servant or slave is that he is a man that has no rights, that he is totally 100% sold out to his master. Now, let me give you a verse to where you can understand that, okay? I want you to turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 
We're going to look at verse 19 and verse 20. Now, I want you to understand that when Paul uses that word servant, first of all, we look at it out as to how it applies to him. But then again, we can also get meaning for ourselves when we say that we too are the servants of Jesus Christ. And so I want you to turn in your Bibles once again. I want you to go to 1 Corinthians 1 Corinthians chapter 6, so we can give meaning uh, as to what this word slave means. Now, when we come to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, begin with verse 19, uh, when you read the whole text, Paul is dealing with the issue of how we are to live. We come to understand that we are vessels of God. We've come to understand that the Spirit of God dwells in us. But notice what Paul says in verse 19, and we can get the understanding here of what it means to be a slave or a servant of Jesus Christ. And so beginning with verse 19, listen to what he says. He says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God. Now notice what he says, and ye are not your own. See, I want you to understand that a slave is not his own because he belongs to someone. And what we learn in the text is that we belong to God. We don't have the liberty to do whatever we want to do with our body. Why? Well, because we belong to God. And he goes on to say in the text in verse 20, notice, he says, For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God, notice what he says, in your body and in your spirit, listen to what he says, which are God's. And so we learn in the text that my body belongs to God, my spirit belongs to to God. Why? Because he owns me. How does he own me? Because I've been bought with a price. It is the precious blood of Jesus Christ that has been shed to purchase me from the slave market of sin. I have been redeemed by the blood. This is true of every child of God. And so in one sense, when Paul speaks of the issue of being a servant of Jesus Christ, he is saying that I am a slave, that I no longer have rights over my body or over my spirit. Why? Because I belong to God. And so in Romans chapter 1, when Paul opens up with the issue of being a servant of Jesus Christ, he's saying that I am a slave. The other thing that we have to understand about Paul being a slave is that Paul received a message from God. He received a message. In Romans chapter 1, as we read further, he's going to say that he has been separated unto the gospel of God. Now, the reason that this is important is because Paul did not come up with his own message. The things that Paul writes in all of his epistles is what he receives by direct revelation from his master, which was Jesus Christ. Paul says, once again, separated unto the gospel of God. Paul says on another occasion that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Paul says on another occasion that he received the gospel of the grace of God. And the whole point here is the fact that he was a slave, that he didn't preach his own message. He preached what was given to him. And what he received that he called the gospel of God, he got by direct revelation from Jesus Christ. Now, another sense in which Paul uses that word slave being in the Hebrew sense is this, a servant who willingly 
commits himself to serve a master whom he loves and respects. And what that means is, is that Paul denies himself and willingly offers himself in service. Now, a good verse for that will be found in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Now, I want you to understand that this applies to the Apostle Paul, but yet at the same time, it must apply to us. You know, when we look at Romans 12, verse 1, for too long, people have thought this to be a salvation verse, but it's not. It is a verse of service. It is God through the Apostle Paul asking us that we willingly give ourselves to God in service. Let's turn over there quickly. Romans chapter 12. And, and, and let's read this. Romans 12. Beginning with verse 1. Now notice what Paul says. Now when we look at the verse, he doesn't give it as a command, but he uses a word to beseech. Paul has said that I am beseeking you or I am earnestly begging you, child of God. Give yourself to God. And the reason that we willingly give ourselves to God is that we might be used in service. The problem with the church today is that there are too many who call themselves Christians, but they are not servants of Jesus Christ. And so when we look at the text, listen to what Paul says. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, watch this, by the mercies of God, watch this, that ye, talking about you, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And so I want you to understand whether in the Greek sense of a servant being a slave who had no rights to one who is asked to deny his rights and to freely and willingly give himself to God that he might be used of him. And you know, when Paul uses that word slave, both sins are true. Now, if you'll read Paul's epistles, or if you'll read in the book of Acts, and you look at his journey, we see all of the suffering that Paul went through in order to get the message of grace to us. Well, I want you to understand that if you're going to be a true servant of Jesus Christ, you are going to suffer for his namesake. And the reason that you're going to suffer for his namesake, because if ever there is a message that Satan hates, it is that message of the cross. It is that message of how Christ has given himself a ransom for all. It is a message that gives us an understanding that the only way that we can be saved or the only way that we can cross from death unto life, it is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And we understand that Paul is the man. Paul is the man that has been chosen by Jesus Christ to give us more insight, more insight into the message that Paul calls the gospel of the grace of God. Now, one more thing that I'd like to bring to you as to how Paul uses the term servant. I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of Galatians. Uh, we're going to go to Galatians chapter 1, and we're going to find Paul using uh, that term again, uh, servant. So go with me to the Galatians, Galatians chapter 1. beginning with verse 10. And we're just going to jump right into the verse, and I'll, I'll give some information here. Listen to what Paul says to these saints. First of all, 
the saints of Galatia, uh, there was a time when they were established in the message of grace. But Paul has to write them and Paul has to uh, reprove them uh, because of their falling away from the very message uh, that he had indoctrinated them with, with them. And what had happened uh, is that they were falling away from the message of grace. They were trying to go back under the law uh, to be perfected before God or even to be saved by God. And Paul had already taught them uh, the doctrines of justification by faith that Christ is all we need and that Christ has done everything to bring us before the Father as being accepted and right in his presence. I want you to understand that there were Judaizers that followed Paul wherever he went trying to corrupt that message. And so here it is, Paul gives them a letter of rebuke. Watch this. Not only that they fell away from the message that Paul preached, but guess what? They even fell away from the man, from the man that God had called to go to them and to give them the truth of his word. And so in verse 10, notice what Paul says, in defense of himself staying true to what God has given him. Listen to what Paul says in verse 10. He says, do I, do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? Watch this. For if I yet pleased men, watch this. Paul says, I should not be the, there it is everybody, the servant of Jesus Christ. And so what we get in the text is Paul saying that I'm going to stay true to what Jesus Christ has given me to understand. I am a servant of Jesus Christ. And one of the ways that I prove that I am a servant to Jesus Christ is that I stay true to the message. I want each and everybody out there to know that Paul preached grace. Paul preached that the only way that a man can be saved is trusting in Christ and him alone. But then again, Paul also had the ministry, which he calls the mystery or the mystery of Christ to where the saints in the body are established as to what God is doing in this present dispensation of grace. The problem in churches today is that we are so traditional that we refuse to humble ourselves to the man that Jesus Christ has call as an apostle before us. Too many in Christendom have usurped the ministry of the apostle Paul. There are so many messages that people are coming up with today that is fracturing the church, splintering the church. There are so many false apostles out there. There are so many saints who are full of themselves to where they come up with their own messages. That is why the church is in the shape that is in today. Let me leave you with this. It is so bad out there that the people of God no longer have a hunger for what is right. We're only concerned about ourselves and what we can get from God. It is all about us. My prayer to you that tune in to this message. I hope and pray in the coming weeks as we delve into the book of Romans that you can get some insight. You might need to be rescued from a whole lot of tradition or a whole lot of hand-me-down Yada, yada. Let me say this, because I don't want you to understand, or should I say, misunderstand me. I don't know everything. I don't profess to know everything. But guess what? I'm not dumb. The Lord has blessed me, and all I want to do is be some help to the saints that are out there. I said on a post earlier today, that the number one priority on my prayer list is for listening ears. 
want to say to each and every one that is tuned in, I hope and pray that just as Paul says that he was a servant of Jesus Christ, examine yourselves, examine yourselves. So the same thing can be said of you as being a servant of Jesus Christ. And in closing, looking at our text, one of the things about being a servant is that we will not be afraid of what man can do to us. We will stay true to the light that God has given. I want to say to each and every one, thank you. This is Pastor Gerald Whedon, Grace Bible Church, signing off. Have a blessed day. Amen.